I'm going to replace the heat sensor and the thermostat in my Mark V Golf. I'm off to drive the car about 20 miles and as you can see the heat gauge still isn't registering but having said that I'd imagine the problem is the actual thermostat given that it's such a cold day outside and I don't need a heat sensor to tell me that the heater in the car isn't working great. But considering I'm going to open the system at all I'm going to replace both parts save me going back and doing one of them again. They're not very expensive parts anyway. The thermostat is located underneath that black housing there. There are two what look like self-tapping screws holding it in. And there is the heat sensor unit just coming out of the side of the thermostat housing. The handiest way I think to drain the system down to this point is by slowly removing the heat sensor and letting the water drain out. So I'm going to catch it here in, as you can see, a very expensive funnel knife fashioned from a plastic bottle. And I'll just squeeze in a plastic bag here just to catch the flow. Using the pliers, I just pull straight out the plastic clip that holds the heat sensor. And I'll slowly release the heat sensor now so as to let the water out slowly. I won't just pull it straight out. And when it's stopped flowing, I'll just take the bag out with its contents. Next, I'm going to put a plastic funnel underneath the thermostat housing. But first, I'm going to have to just remove this clip that holds the gear shift. Make a little bit more room to work. Put a little pressure outwards on the top spring and just slide it back, it should pop off. It looks like a self-threading screw, so just be careful when you're putting it back in. Start it backwards by screwing it backwards, and you can feel it clicking back into its original location, and then screw it forward with your fingers. And once I break the seal on the thermostat housing, there's a small little bit more water to drain away into the plastic funnel and into the plastic bag. And there's the thermostat. And that pin in the thermostat slots into a hole in the housing, keeping it centered. So when you're fitting the new thermostat, make sure that the pin slides back into the hole in the housing. And as you can see there, the actual gear shift itself can slide a little bit more forward to give it a bit more room. And with this screw, which is a self-treading screw, 
screw it in with your fingers first not to force it into anywhere it shouldn't be going and I'd suggest to start screwing it backwards first in an anti-clockwise direction you'll feel it clicking into the original thread line it cut for itself and then you can start screwing it forwards again and I tightened them up a little bit at a time each side until they were tight. And I just finished off tightening them with thumb pressure, bearing in mind that you're screwing them into plastic so you want to be very careful not to wring the threads. And now to rehouse the gear shift and put back on the clip. And don't forget to take back out the bag and funnel. Now to refit the new heat sensor, not forgetting to slip on the rubber sealing ring. And when it's in place, this little clip slides over the body of it like this and keeps it from sliding out of its housing. So there it is back in place and you can still twist it around in order to get into a position where it fits easily onto its connector. When you're topping up the reservoir just be aware that you may have to keep topping it up a few times as the water that's in the reservoir circulates through the engine where you've drained it out. What I done here was I filled up the reservoir, turned the engine on and then kept topping up the reservoir as the water drained out as it was being pumped through the system by the water pump. Turn the heater on full blast in the car as well just in case some of the water has drained out of that area as well so it needs to be opened up to allow it to refill. Put the reservoir cap back on and just let the pressure build back up into the system and then just check it around for leaks, especially where you've worked. And top it up again if it needs it and of course check it again after driving it a few miles and there's the heating gauge showing that it's back in business also I'm finding that since I installed the new thermostat and heat sensor the car has become much more economical to run